Cheryl or Nyasha. I am the founder and creative director of Tiger Tide, which is a women's clothing brand that focuses on pieces that accentuate everything from fingers, more like trendy pieces that are in. I absolutely love Natai, and I'll tell you why. It's an all-inclusive, diverse brand that caters to all body types and shapes, and with its elegant contemporary characteristic designs, it amplifies the beauty of the wearer. You know, I really love it. What I love most about Natai Natai is that they have managed to cast a wider net in fashion by bringing together all types of women with different body types and making sure that everyone feels represented in the fashion industry. Good. I'm good. I'm great. Great to see you again. So we took this before and something tragic happened. <laughs> well, that's just a disclaimer to the people, but um, the silver lining there is there's now some familiarity between us. So that's the takeaway we have there. But yeah, it's great. Uh, thanks again for giving us your time. Um, super stoked to hear about your story. Thanks for being interested in my story. <laughs> That's our job, yeah. that's what we do. Um, so I know you, Cheryl Johnson, as um, the director, the founder of, of Natai Natai. That's really uh, what I've seen from the outside looking in. But how would you describe yourself? Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Cheryl, or Nyasha. I'm the founder and creative director of Natai Natai, which is a women's clothing brand that focuses pieces that accentuate everything from fingers, you know, like trendy yeah. pieces that are in. Um, and besides being the creative director for Natai Natai, I'm also a wife and a mother to a beautiful little boy called Ziggy. Yeah. Yeah. So my life um, consists of work at the time and, and I have family. So that's me. Yeah. yeah. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. I've seen Ziggy on it. On Instagram a few times, charming guy. He's, mm -hmm. he's a cool guy. But yeah, so you you've told us you, what what your business is really about. Um, I, I assume there's a cool origin story, or maybe it's not cool, but I, I really want to hear that. Um, why did you decide to start a business? Well, what what made you take that deep? Well, um, when I was in college, I studied business administration and art history. Yeah. So I've always been interested in wanting to start my own thing. Um, the whole working for other people thing wasn't working for me. Um, so yeah, I, I always wanted to, to start something. And when I was in college, I actually tried to start a fashion business. Yeah. Um, but then I didn't really have the knowledge and know-how. Actually, like, how do I, so how do I do it off. <laughs> uh -huh. But I was also very interested in art and like photography and I just had a bunch of different interests. Yeah. Um, so when I came back to Zimbabwe, I was like, okay, how can I incorporate everything that I've learned into um, like a business that I'm actually like passionate about, you know, something yeah. that's not just about making money. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how I got the, the idea for Natai Natai. Uh, we actually didn't start by making our own clothes like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, I started by um, reselling clothes from other brands that yeah. people are into, like Zara, you know, those um, international fast fashion brands. Um, but then it didn't really sit right with me because, you know, fast fashion has a very bad uh, reputation and um, it's just not good for the planet. So yeah. I was like, okay, I want to start something that um, it's cool, but it's also like good for the planet, good for our, you know, local community. Yeah. Um, um, something that could help like create jobs in Zimbabwe. So um, yeah, that's what led to Natai. I don't know if you have like a specific question. Ah, that's <laughs> um, that's clear enough. That's yeah. clear enough. But you said two interesting things there, mm -hmm. like your college experience, which was in the USA, I believe. And then, um, so maybe let's start there before I go on to the second thing. Um, 
what were the things you took away from that experience that we now see in the task? So maybe to, to phrase that a bit differently is, uh, what part of that experience is now, um, or what did you learn by leading the country that you might not have learned if you had stayed in Zim? Mm, that's a good question. Well, I believe that if you have the opportunity or the chance, you should yeah. just leave Zimbabwe and go somewhere <laughs> else for a bit, uh, whether it's a year or two years, yeah. because it really helps to open up your mind. And I believe that's what happened with me, because um, I finished off high school um, in the States, and then I did college there yeah. for four years, and then about a year or so, um, I worked at like, um, I interned at a gallery for a bit. So when I was there, I feel like my mind kind of just opened up to different views, different perspectives about um, just how people perceive things, different ways of thinking. Um, and I feel like my my artistic eye, <laughs> um, yeah. like it got trained by just seeing other people's art. You know, when you're overseas, there's more access to things like that, like yeah, art, like art galleries. galleries. Yes. There's just a culture. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it just happened unknowingly that my mind got trained to see certain things, things yeah. you know, uh, to see certain things in certain ways. Um, and now it's just manifesting itself through my brand. Yeah, your business now. Yes. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, so another interesting thing, if we're still talking about the, the, the origin story, and I think you touched on this, but uh, uh, you actually, when you came back, you actually worked for a while, if I'm not mistaken, and then you quit your job, which is, yeah, which is kind of scary in the context of Zim to like quit your job and uh, start your own thing. Why, why did you leave the, the security of a job and then start your actual own brand? Our job actually secure because <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, if they're working for someone else, one day they could just be like, you know what, we don't need you anymore. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so, um, I mean, besides that, I've always been a risk taker. Like, yeah. I'm not afraid to take risks. Because I, I do know the consequences. Like, okay, now I'm not getting X, X amount every month. Um, you know, like, that's very scary. I'm not going to be getting this money. Uh, but that also pushes you. Because yeah. now you're like, Oh, I have to make this work because <laughs> I need to eat. You have no <laughs> you know? options. Exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of a driving um, factor for me. Yeah. Like, oh, I need to take this risk. And, you know, taking this risk is really going to push me um, towards my dreams uh, and doing the things that I'm actually into. So I think that's why I woke up one day. I was like, nah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's interesting. I like that. I like that because. Mm -hmm. That kind of sounds like me as well. It's like, the, the, in, especially the thing you said initially to say like, is there really security or have we just been uh, socialized to think there's security there? So, how long have you guys been operational? I launched Natai Natai in 2019. So we've been around for about two and a half years now. Oh, okay, two and a half years. Two and a half years. That's, a, that's a long time in Zim, eh? That's a long time in Zim. And yeah, yeah, I, I really think so. Like generally businesses have a hard time starting up mm -hmm. the world over, but because of the challenges in Zim, I think that kind of accentuates the problem. And, and let's talk about that for a bit. Um, what are some of the challenges you've actually faced uh, since the inception of the brand? One of the, the biggest challenges for me, I think we even touched on this the last time we spoke, yeah. um, one has been getting to people to use the website. <laughs> um, you know, in, in Zim, I feel like, yes, we're kind of getting used to e-commerce, but as a small business, um, like Natai Natai, yeah. I feel like when people have access to you like personally, whether it's through WhatsApp or Instagram, yeah. they tend to like avoid going- The channels. To, yes, avoid <laughs> the channels that will help them, that are more efficient. Uh, for them to get their product or their order. So that's been a very big challenge for me, like getting people to like, hey, you can go on the website and see Everything all the colors, yeah. all the sizes that we have, um, how to order from us. Uh, but I feel like people are coming around and yeah. they're seeing that it's a lot more convenient. 
Like, oh, you can either text me at 11 p.m. at night and, and wait for an answer, <laughs> or you can just go to the website. Ah, uh, yes. And then the second To be fair, I think I'm actually one of those people. Really? I've, I've never gone to your website. I always oh text you whenever I want something. Yeah. I'm just like, yo, can I have this ice chart? Can exactly. I this? Can I that? I, yeah, so I'll stop being that person. <laughs> no, but everything, it's always easier to just go on the site. But if you have any more questions, I don't Beyond mind the text. Site. I don't yeah. mind the answer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're about to go on. <laughs> um, so the biggest challenge, though, that's been um, hindering us or yeah. stopping us from scaling up, because as a business, you want to grow, you want to reach new clients, um, you know, uh, make more items, get more orders. So the biggest thing has been the lack of a cheap um, like delivery system outside of Zimbabwe. Ah, logistics. <laughs> it, yes, logistics. <laughs> um, like finding an affordable way for people outside of Zimbabwe to buy our stuff. Yeah. Because right now, with what day, the delivery fees can be anything <laughs> from like 20 to like 60 bucks, depending on how fast yeah. the person wants the item. Which might uh, be as much as the order. Exactly, which might even be more than the order. Yeah, yes, you have some instances where people are like, oh, I don't mind, I really want the thing. But for the majority of people, they need an uh, affordable it. shipping yeah. fee to, to get the item. So that's um, one of the things that we've been really trying to figure out. Like, okay, in order for us to grow and to reach people all over the world, yeah. how can we go about this? You know, like, I hear that. so. I hear that. Maybe next time I'll have an answer. <laughs> hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully. And then going away from the dark stuff a bit, you said two and a half years. In that time, what has been the most uh, joyful aspect of, of, of running a business, actually? I think just being able to create your own day, create your own schedule, um, kind of just being able to make your own decisions yeah. you know, without having to answer to like you can just wake up and be like, oh, I want to try this uh, new idea, and you don't have to go see so and so. You know, you just wake up. Manager, and, exactly. CEO. <laughs> That's a great thing. Although you work a lot more than if you're yeah. working for someone else, um, there's a bit of freedom that it's a comes. Trade-off, with, I guess. Mm-hmm, yeah. A bit of freedom that just comes with doing your own thing. Like really, I enjoy that freedom. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that, and and I know you. Notoriously, or at least I actually agree with you. You you don't work on Mondays. No. You have that policy, and I love that because Mondays have this thing, especially when you're like employed. Mm-hmm. They have this thing where like from the Sunday to the Monday itself, That's you're awesome. carrying something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You carry something so heavy, mm-hmm. but uh, beyond the, the joy. You, you, like you said initially, you said um, you're a wife, you're a mother, and then uh, you're a businesswoman, or you have all those three things. And those are all, well, I won't say equally demanding because I don't know, <laughs> but how have you balanced that? The challenge of being a mom, uh, the challenges of catering to your family, and the challenges of, of running a business. I just know that I'm not shy to ask for help. <laughs> if I need help, you know, I will ask. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm just lucky enough to have someone that watches Biggie while you know I'm away at work. Um, mm-hmm. And then if I have to come in during the weekends, his grandparents are like, you know, <laughs> we'll help you. Yes, that, so. or his dad, you know, he's very supportive. Yeah. So it's good to have a, a supportive uh, system, like people around you that really want to see you grow, yeah. that want to see you win, and. I feel like for me that's been one of the deciding factors or uh, one of the things that has caused the tie to be what it is right now. Yeah. Like I just have a really great uh, support system and people that are always willing to like step in to make sure that everything uh, moves. Yeah. yeah. I'm very yeah. lucky. That's great to hear. Blessed. That's great I'm to blessed. Hear. Very blessed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because many times you hear entrepreneurs complain about the lack of support, especially in the context of Zim, you hear about the lack of support, the lack of community, and, and stuff like that. So that's really um, uh, great to hear. Another thing that 
uh, piqued my interest when I was researching around this episode was, um, and you actually talked about this when you talked about the decision to stop selling uh, fast fashion items. Mm -hmm. uh, please, sustainability is a big deal for you guys. Um, why is that so, and, and what efforts are you guys actually making to, to make Matamatai more sustainable? I, well, I care about the environment, like most people do. Um, and I remember just learning about the devastating impact that fast fashion has had on not only the environment, but on the people, whether it's India or wherever. Um, I remember just like watching these videos and reading these articles about how the garment workers are treated, yeah. um, that they don't receive fair pay, um, just the general working conditions and things yeah. that. And when you learn about that stuff, you just can't view fashion the same. Even yeah. the way you consume or buy clothes just changes. Um, and I feel like just knowing about that has impacted um, the time and time, like I, I'm committed to making sure that um, we try our best. Yes, we're not perfect. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're not perfect, and we're always trying to find ways to be um, environmentally friendly. But just um, we just try to incorporate methods that we know are less harmful to the planet. Yeah. For example, we make the majority of our pieces when people order. So instead of just making stock, you know, oh. we we make the pieces according to the person's measurements. Um, but if we do have to make stock, because some people like to come in and see the item, or you know, you know, just yeah, see the colors. Like, they need samples. The <laughs> <laughs> they need samples, but they're not a lot. You know, just yeah, a few for people to like come in and just like and get a feel of the yeah, brand. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we make our products on order. And then, um, you know, when you, you're making clothes, you get, you get a lot of like scraps. Yeah. So we donate those scraps to ladies that need mats or rugs or people that just find a way to incorporate the fabric scraps. So instead of like throwing them away, you know, we know that it's going to help the next person. It's going to help someone else. Yes. And yeah. it's not going to end up in like a landfill or in a bin somewhere. Yeah, yeah that's great to hear. That's great to hear. And then another thing that, um, really um, liked about your business from the outside looking in is there's a post you, you posted I think I don't remember if it was earlier this year or last year where you were talking about uh, the orders you had had and, and really sharing openly your experiences from, from that year from 2020 and to me it was interesting because most brands are kind of secretive about those kinds of things um, why has that openness uh, why is that a thing? Because like you said as well, people prefer to talk to you directly. That's another sign of like your openness. Why has that been a part of your business? I think I'm just a transparent person in general and it's it's kind of it's part of my personality. <laughs> like I'm not trying to hide anything and um because sometimes when you're starting a business, sometimes you want to seem like you've got it all together. Yeah. You know, like you want to be like, oh, um, I've got this on lock, you know, like, oh, I didn't, you know, struggle to get orders and all that. Yeah. But I remember in, when you launched in 2019 to uh, the beginning of 2020, um, we only got about, I think about 60 orders in total, yeah. um, the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> about 60 <laughs> orders. Um, and for me, it's a lot to me, but for someone else, it could be yeah, like, it could be like that's a small business. Uh, but from having gone from like 60 orders to like 400 and something mm -hmm. the next year, um, it was kind of inspiring because there are moments when, as an entrepreneur, you kind of want to give up. You're like, ah, there's <laughs> lockdown, there's this, there's that, all these challenges. True. Is it really worth going up, you know, continuing Continue. with this? But then when you see the growth, it's kind of a reminder to myself. And to people who also yeah, look up to Natai and Natai, uh, they also encourage, um, when they see our growth, it inspires them. Um, and yeah, I think it's cool to be open with people. And True. then they, they trust you more True. when you're open with them. Yeah. That's great, that's great. 
And then something that I found just um, kind of quirky, kind of interesting mm -hmm. was uh, I read in an interview you did, I think it was for Glamour magazine. Look at me plugging Glamour magazine. <laughs> like <this. laughs> yeah. I think it was for them where you stated that you would want to collaborate with Vans and New Balance uh, at some point. Wh why those two brands? Um, I think they're just my, a couple of my favorites with the Vans. And it's like when you look at me, this will look. Oh, you're actually wearing Vans <laughs> right now. <laughs> I am. Um, it's always been, I feel like that was my first like sneaker brand that I was like, oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, I feel like if you just add a pair of sneakers to any outfit, it just adds a cool factor. Yeah. Um, it just adds some personality. And for me, um, I'm also about comfort. Like I want to look cute, but I also want to be comfortable, yeah. you know? And I move around a lot, especially with my tie tie, going and buying fabric and doing all these things. So I yeah. need a comfortable shoe. So I sneakers for me, you know, you give me that you. balance of you know, cool, but cute and comfortable. <laughs> I hear that, I yeah. hear that, I hear that. And then what about locally? What are you seeing uh, locally in, in your industry that excites you that maybe you'd want to work with? That be it, um, uh, designers, other fashion houses, maybe photographers, because I think that's a big part of what you guys do. Like mm -hmm. from the outside looking in, your aesthetic is very intentional. Who, who are some of those brands or people that you see and you're like, I would, I would love to work with those one day? That's interesting that you should mention because um, a couple Wednesdays a month, like one Wednesday a month, yeah. we've been meeting up. Well, I've been meeting up with um, different creatives here in the studio to like collaborate on photo shoots and reels and just different um, ideas. Like we all just come together in here and like work together to produce art. And I'm not going yeah. to call it content, <laughs> that word, guys. <laughs> so we meet in here and then we just like, you know, um, it's a merging of minds, a merging of ideas. And um, I've been working with the African selfie stick on that's his name on Instagram. Yeah. Then I was the photographer and um, a couple other photographers, and it's been really cool to just do that. Um, and I think we should be doing something again very soon. Um, yeah. And what we've been doing is they've been taking like photos of um, our pieces, but now we also want to like incorporate other brands. You know, oh. how can we collaborate with other brands? Um, other local brands and create like art with them um yeah but besides that yes i feel like there's a huge thing going on in the zip fashion world right now all yeah. these new upcoming brands that are doing so well um i love to see it um, <laughs> i see them True. being featured in, in these magazines gq, GQ glamour, glamour. <laughs> um, vogue i know um house of stone is featured in vogue yeah um yeah, and House of Stone is, a, is another interesting it's, one. It's, yeah. it's so good. Um, so yeah, like all these brands, Rita Gerardi, Rob, yeah. um, so many good brands that are doing, you know, so well. Yeah. And yeah, I just I love it for us. <laughs> Great, man. I yeah. love to see it as well from the outside mm -hmm. looking in. It just looks like there, there's a movement in, especially like you said in fashion. I see. I think I see a bit of that in music as well. And yeah, hopefully that keeps being the case. So, how important has been social media been for you guys? Cause, so I asked that because you talked about collaborating with uh, with photographers, and from day one, <laughs> um, there was always an aesthetic that seemed very intentional from you guys. So my question becomes: How has social media been important for you guys? And that social media. Well, our, our brand is on social media. We started selling on social media. Um, and, you know, I, I had help. I remember when I first, when we first started out, you know, doing our first shoots, I worked with uh, uh, Tabuta from Naka Visuals. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just understood the vision and he kind of, you know, he got the picture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, literally and figuratively. Um, so, I remember just like like when we created our first images, how pe people um like they were very I don't know how to describe it. 
like it was received so yeah. well and it just showed me the power of like social media like if you're giving people something fresh something new something that they haven't seen before um they'll be more open to you know interacting with your yeah. brand engaging and then buying from you so social media is very important you know yes i do have a website but then <laughs> the social media you know we we it's important to have like a good social media space to like lead people towards to the site. Like, oh, I hear that. So you just don't end there. It's great on social media, but getting new clients, new followers, and um, you just meet people, raising brand awareness, yeah. and then um, it leads them towards you know like making purchases. So definitely, social media is extremely important. It's great to hear. Mm -hmm. It's great to hear. Um, and this is something we actually didn't talk about the last time we had this conversation. Um, and I don't really remember what made me think of this, but uh, I've always wondered, you guys go direct to consumer, so that uh, someone orders, they come and pick it up or you deliver. Um, are retail stores something you've actively thought about uh, pursuing in, in future or direct to consumer is really where you feel most comfortable and you'd like to grow that? I feel like I get this question a lot from people. They're like, oh, I should open a shop yeah. to, you know, by the village. <laughs> oh, you should open a shop yeah. by Arendelle or wherever, which is cool. And if the op opportunity were to present itself, I wouldn't be like, ah, no. Um, but then yeah. one of the things is that's, that stops me or that hinders you from like opening a brick and mortar store yeah. is the, the high, you know, rental yeah. and all that and it affects the pricing of our stores as well so you know exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's i feel like it's good for everyone if we just uh if they order online and then they get their items in the studio or we deliver for them yeah. it just makes the pieces more affordable because more affordable. now if we have like expensive rentals and already things in them guys <laughs> kind of expensive yes yeah. people don't uh, have that much disposable mm -hmm. income so at the moment, I would really just like to focus on um, improving our craft and our quality and our range yeah. of pieces. Um, and then in the future, if the opportunity does present itself, then I'd be more open to like having a physical shop show. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Um, so you, you talked about uh, improving your pieces, uh, improving the quality. And I think we actually talked about this the last time, and, and that question for me is, what your favorite piece? Because you guys have a catalog of pieces. What's your personal favorite? My favorite, oh my word. Um, it's the, I think I mentioned this last time, the Ziggy suits. So it's like these high-waisted pants that are like, they're kind of loose, and then it has like a wrap top. Um, and the reason why I, I love this piece is, um, you can be versatile with it. Like you can wear the pants with something and then the top with something else. You can yeah. wear them together with heels or with sneakers. Um, it's a very versatile fit. And it's actually been one of our most best serving right now wow. uh, for both people that go to work or people that just want to like chill out. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's my favorite piece and it seems, seems to be the, the favorite part of the right now. Well. As well. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear that, man. And then lastly, um, outside of fashion, which you mentioned, uh, and your family, or at least outside of your business and your family, what other interests do you have? Like, who, you know, like, what does Shell do on occasion when she's not busy with fam or... I'm a meme lord. <laughs> <laughs> no. That is very true. <laughs> man, you can't take that, like, that no, is a fact. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, guys, I love memes. I just love you. <laughs> Uh, and just dark comedy. Uh, but besides that, um, what do I spend my time doing besides the time and time? I feel like my life just consists of creativity and art, so sometimes it's hard to like separate myself from yeah. my work. Um, I mean, besides spending time with my family and working on a tie, and the fact that we're in lockdown right now, it's kind of hard to have like a social, social, <laughs> social life, yeah, life you know. So, um, 
I've been forced to dislike most people's like their home and, and meme, <laughs> and, meme um, and you know just watch movies or whatever um, and then I mean I do have been working on other things you know when you're at home you start thinking okay what else can I do <laughs> besides the time is high um, so watch this space <laughs> That's great to hear. I'll that. let you know what it is that's next time. That's an exclusive. Like, yes. yes, that's mm -hmm. an exclusive for us. But yeah, yeah, man, thanks so much for for having us. You said something interesting there that I really relate to. Like being stuck at home makes you forces you to be creative or to think yeah. because we really started um, our brand because we were my brother and I were in isolation. We suspected we might have had COVID and we were in mm -hmm. isolation and it was driving me mad. And I was coming up with so many business ideas, most of them were shit, but then I stuck <laughs> on this one, I was like, okay, I like yeah. this one, and, and that's really how it came about. But thanks so much, Cheryl, for like giving us your time. Um, Thank you. You guys have an engaging story, uh, and I'm sure your, your biggest fans and even other people will be inspired and learn so much from you. I hope, I hope someone <laughs> takes away something from this interview. <laughs> if anything, uh, they should they should take away that you're a meme lord and at least <laughs> at least follow you on your socials for the humor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. I hope we have a conversation and next time we do, what will be the target for you? I don't know. What what would you like us to talk about next? Like, let's say we talk in three years. Mm -hmm. What would you like to be different? <laughs> I I think I, it would be very cool for you to be like. Oh, how would this dress this celebrity? <laughs> it is. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, okay. So how does it feel to now be in like 10, 15 countries? Or yeah, something I hear that. Like that. I hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully for us, we're a bigger platform as well. And that way everyone wins. But thanks so much again. Thank you.